friends, you know, and uh, my teacher who is interested in the engineering and computer science. So. Uh, and why did you choose this field? Well, at the beginning, I was confused about what field should I choose. So I was thinking of being a doctor, then I changed my major. And I was looking for something that like, would interest me, like would make me like challenge myself and do my best as I can. And my and one of the things that made me think of this field is my brother is an engineer in the same group, engineering computer science, and he used to talk to us about you know, about this. About what he does, what things can can we do, about the software, and so I was I was like curious to to know about it. So I thought about taking that class, an intro class, and I took an intro class of the intro of computer science and electrical engineering, and I liked it. And so I was I, I thought, yeah, maybe I'll try this and I'll go on. And it seems like it worked out well until now. <laughs> My name is Charlotte Miller. I want to be a structural engineer. And why did you choose this field? Um, choosing this field was a weird transition for me. Uh, I didn't graduate high school. Um, I Actually, I dropped out to support myself. I'm a first generation college student. The majority of the people I know in my family haven't even graduated high school. Um, and I'm from St. Louis where the college graduation rate is 13%. When I moved here, a lot of opportunities opened up. I was encouraged uh, to start college because I love learning and I was watching a bunch of TED Talks to supplement my learning and it was something that I really missed in my life. And when I first signed up, I said I want to be an engineer and I was told that I didn't have what it takes um, by somebody I looked up to. My name is Kale and I'm a flow uh, assistant. Uh, so how long have you worked in childcare? Uh, since last year, but it hasn't been a year, it's almost a year. Almost a year? Awesome. Uh, so why did you choose working in childcare? Because uh, I used to babysit my niece who was a year old and that was fun. But she would always come over for a little bit of, on the weekend, so I thought it would be better to do it long term, more of the day, longer hours. And I want to help kids. Uh, so, uh, what challenges uh, do you feel you encounter as a male educator for young children? There's a lot of females around, and to me it feels like I don't know as much as they are, and I, I don't know, I feel challenged because they, they think they are more, it's they do most of them. It's intimidating sometimes. In, in recent years, I haven't felt it as much. Um, I know when I was younger, um, I don't know if, if I just have thick skin. And I, I just don't notice it much now, but um, I just, I remember, you know, like, like weeds I was working with and stuff would be told that they didn't want their kids, like, sitting with me or sitting on my lap or being one-on-one -on -one with me because they were worried about, you know, the unspoken, like, you know, like, like, am I gonna, like, molest their kids or anything? Like, you know, that was, that was hard. Um, sorry. I had to work through that a lot. I noticed it tremendously. Um, I experienced discrimination almost on a weekly basis. Uh, and it's, it's rough. I think the harshest thing that anyone has said to me in the past couple months has been, uh, if I don't have an A in calculus, I'm going to kill people uh, with my designs. When I was interviewed for the position, I remember is that uh, the person who interviewed me uh, said that we really don't want to deter males from this field, especially if they feel encouraged going into it, which seemed kind of weird. It's kind of like, oh, that's, is that really one of the factors that's going to get me hired is because there's just not a lot of guys in this position, which seems kind of, I don't know, there's just something kind of weird about that. It's, 
I did have good hours. I did, I believe, have good qualifications for the assistance job, but the fact that that was kind of part of it was weird. Uh, challenges is the, you know, the stigma that males aren't nurturing, um, or males are sexual predators of young children. There are programs you don't hire men because of this one, this one, you know, like this one thing happened, so they're like, well, we don't hire men anymore. Like, not that they advertise that, obviously, but there are people who talk about it. And then, like, so you know that that happens. Um, so it's just kind of just that. Um, you know, and I had a student in the fall, an adult student, who didn't want to be my student because I was a man. Like, there is not like a story, like at the beginning when I entered the, the intro, the intro class to intro computer science, and I entered the class and there was all boys. There was no girl. I was the only one who entered the class. Even the inspector was a was a male. So I, when I entered, like everyone was like looking at me. Did you really forget which classroom are you going to or something like that? Everyone was looking at me and they're like what's going on like the whole class so and then i went to the i went and the set and after that like sometimes when we're doing for example labs labs ex uh, like i mean doing the experiments like i feel like so, most of the time like boys don't like they think that i'm not i'm not i'm not good enough in doing those things so they just try to like you do the easy things you write the report and you do this and we'll do the other stuff, the other stuff. I'd say it's just kind of, you know, usually when you walk into uh, like a classroom, there's kind of the expectation, kind of subconsciously of a female being that position. And sometimes I kind of feel that when someone walks in, especially the first, first time seeing me in the room, it's, especially also being a teenager, when people walk into the room, they'll sometimes see that and it's kind of like, oh, okay, you're the, you're the assistant, okay. It's kind of like a weird disconnect, if that makes sense. I don't know, sometimes I feel like opinions are valued more than they should be. I mean, they should be valued. We all reckon they should be valued, but I also don't want people to feel like, you know, you know my, my word is, is law because I'm a man. It's like, we all have our own experiences and we all have our own values. Um, so it's this weird thing, you know, like I talked about earlier, like, the way people viewed me, but at the same time, like, this is weird dynamic I've been trying to work through for years. I started, um, I had a parent that was concerned about me being alone with her daughter, and that was kind of a challenge because um, I didn't want, like, the negative attention towards me. Um, I think that's a good way to say it. Um, I didn't want anybody to be like, Oh, he's a male, he might, you know, do inappropriate stuff with my child, which, um, like I said, it kind of brought me down just a little bit, but I still managed to come into work with a great or a positive attitude, despite the parents' um, remarks about me. Uh, I feel like I get judged by the parents too secretly, because I'm a male and I think that's not a real job. Uh, us doing it, I think that mean that's what I So that's pretty challenging. Wow. Sometimes the way that they look at you is think they're thinking about that. And I kind of get nervous too. So I don't know. Oh, you have a wife. You know, that's that's a good one. I'm like, yeah, and we're not all gay. <laughs> it's all right. You know, and. Um, you know, I think it's other than sexuality, it's just the, the presence of a male as a venture is, is the biggest thing to, to think about. Um, that, again, it's a, a nurturing thing. Like, you're, you're not gay and you can nurture somebody, yes. Not only gay men can nurture children, but straight men can nurture children. I don't think anyone's ever going to take me seriously. Unless they, you know get to know me or are genuine people, uh, but I think the vast majority, no, I don't really, with the trending patterns of my education, I don't really see it happening. 
I think what, what I want to change is the way you see is viewed. Um, like, you know, there's all these scholarly papers and people are like, oh, you see is so important, but like, as a culture, like, nobody cares. Um, I feel like my gender probably, um, it's a good way to put it, it shouldn't be like a, oh, a factor. Well, well we, we do live in a society where men are like, are, um, I don't know, a good way to put it, um, are viewed as, you know, like, uh, I don't know, a good way to put it. <laughs> People. So let's face it, I'm a big burly man and dealing with young children when they first come in they can be kind of frightened or you never know what emotional baggage children or their families bring in and so that is a challenge to overcome those stigmas or those challenges other people have faced um, in their life and show them that it can be different, that there can be a positive male role model who's going to be your advocate and help you through life right now. Uh, it's been a, a big challenge. Reality, um, you know, we're here to provide for the kids and they should be able to understand that. Um, we're just here to, you know, help their kids learn and all that great stuff.